Chapter 5. The Luciferian Doctrine. From the book Satan, Prince of This World written by William Guy Carr, 1959. The Luciferian Dogma and Doctrines as expounded by Albert Pike and others who at one time or another have been high priests of the Luciferian Creed can be summed up in very few words. It teaches inversion of the commandments of God. It teaches the exact opposite to what the Holy Scriptures tell was God's plan for the rule of the universe before Lucifer led a heavenly revolt. How do we know this statement to be the truth? The answer is simple. At various times documents of a most serious nature have fallen into hands other than those intended, while being circulated by the high priests of the Luciferian creed. To those they had selected to be heads of the lodges of the Grand Orient and councils of the new and reformed Palladian Rite, which have been the secret headquarters of the WRM. Throughout the world, I call these incidents acts of God, raids on lodges of the Grand Orient and councils of the new and reformed Palladian Rite between 1784 and 1924 produced documents and other evidence which prove conclusively the continued existence of the Luciferian conspiracy to obtain ultimate world domination. The raids conducted by the Bavarian government in 1784-1785 produced documents which were published under the title, The Original Writings of the Order and Sect of the Illuminati. The raids conducted by the police under orders of the Hungarian government in 1919 after Bela Kuhn had usurped power and been deposed, are typical of what we mean. Further evidence of the Luciferian plot to destroy all remaining governments and existing religions is to be found in the book, Proofs of a Conspiracy to Destroy All Governments and Religions in Europe by Professor John Robison, of Edinburgh University in 1797. Professor Robison had been approached by Weishaupt and his leading Illuminists and asked to assist them in filtrating Luciferian ideas disguised as Illuminism and progress, into educational institutions and the lodges of Freemasonry in England and Scotland. He was asked to tour Europe, and, as a 32nd, Mason of the Scottish Rite, he was introduced to leading Illuminists who had set up Grand Orient lodges throughout Europe. John Robison suspected there was something behind Illuminism as it had been explained to him but kept his suspicions to himself. He was entrusted with a copy of Weishaupt's revised and modernized edition of the age-old conspiracy as compiled by Zwock, for his study and comments. When the French Revolution broke out in 1789 as part of the conspirators' revolutionary program, Professor Robertson decided to publish the information he possessed in support of what the Bavarian government had exposed in 1786. Twelve the investigations of dozens of historians have turned up further evidence which they found in national archives and those of universities. There is no lack of documentary and other kinds of evidence to prove what we are going to say. The truly amazing thing about the Luciferian conspiracy is the way those who directed it down through the centuries have been able to cause officials of both church and state to brush aside the evidence of proof even when it has been put before them by men whose lives had proved their honesty and integrity and desire to serve God voluntarily. The fact that those who direct the Luciferian conspiracy are able to hold this control over people in high places in politics and religion simply confirms the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It illustrates in the clearest possible manner the supernatural characteristics of the conspiracy. It proves that supernatural beings, angels, both good and evil, exert a great influence on human beings while we are here on earth undergoing our period of trial. It proves that the wiles, the cunning, the lies, and deceits of fallen angels often affect adversely the counsel, inspirations, of the good angels. It proves that our human nature, because of the fall of our first parents, 
inclines more to evil than it does to good. Until we are born again spiritually, we don't want to labor this angle of the WRM. But we do want to make it easier for the man in the street to understand what is going on. Those who direct the conspiracy have succeeded in keeping their existence so very secret that lack of knowledge on the part of the public enables them to develop their plot to its intended goal, and wean millions of souls away from God. This is the Luciferian creed. 1. Where God requires a human being to prove it wishes to love and serve him voluntarily for eternity, out of respect for his infinite perfections. Lucifer says, I will enslave the human race under a totalitarian dictatorship, and deprive them of their physical and mental liberties, and so negate their ability to use their intellect and free will as God intended. This is the purpose behind the United Nations World Health and World Mental Health Organizations, both of which international movements were started by Dr. Brock Chisholm, of Canada as these events have been dealt with in full and pawns in the game. We do not repeat the details here too, where the commandments of God make perfectly clear what he considers sin. Luciferians and their agents teach the inversion of the commandments of God. Pike and other high priests of the Luciferian creed state, everything God has made known to be displeasing to him, is pleasing to Lucifer. 3. God's plan for creation required everything to be made different. There are no two leaves exactly alike. No two snowflakes. The Luciferian ideology requires regimentation. So that everything can be centralized and made as much alike as possible. Integration is the most typical example of this theory being put into practice. Integration does not mean simply that the public shall accept the principle that people of different races, colors, and creeds shall enjoy the same privileges and considerations as white people. Integration means to bring together parts so they form one whole, that is, to make up and complete as a whole. The Luciferian ideology requires that the human race be integrated absolutely so that reds blacks, yellows, and whites be mixed into one vast conglomeration of humanity without any distinctive features, cultures, racial traits, or other peculiarities. The UNESCO man. For, God's plan requires that there shall be numerous worlds. The scriptures speak of the seventh heaven. 2 Sam 22, 8, Prov 8 27 29. 2 Cor 12, 2. They name the different choirs of angels, their nature, office and characteristics. 13 They tell us that even in each choir, every angel is higher or lower in scale than another. We are told it is possible for those in the lowest choirs to work their way up so they achieve higher status by merit, or descend down the scale because of lack of merit. The Luciferian ideology requires that there shall be only two classes 1. Those who govern, that is, the holders of the light the superintelligent beings, 14, 15 and 2. Those they enslave, where God permits, encourages and rewards individual initiative. Luciferianism does not tolerate it in any shape or form 5. God insists that in order to ensure perfect peace and happiness in heaven, every soul he selects as one of his elect must have proved that it honestly and sincerely, without qualification or evocation, desires to love and serve God voluntarily out of respect for his infinite perfections for all eternity. It is to produce proof of this desire that we human beings are being tested so thoroughly. God doesn't intend that there shall be a second revolt in heaven. Luciferianism, on the other hand, says that permanent peace shall be assured by the king despot, exercising absolute despotism over his subjects. The Luciferian protocols say, the Luciferian totalitarian dictatorship when established on this earth will have at its head a king despot whose will is to be enforced by satanic despotism 6. 
where God's plan required love to be the creative, and charity the governing force in nature. The Luciferian creed says lust shall be the creative force and right or might the governing force 7, where God ordered that each class of his creatures on this earth shall increase and multiply, each according to his kind. The Luciferian ideology requires that in the final stage of a conspiracy only the governing body shall have the liberty to enjoy the pleasures lusts of the flesh, and the right to gratify their carnal desires. All others are to be made into human cattle, and enslaved physically, mentally, and spiritually, in order to ensure permanent peace and social security. Procreation will be strictly limited to types and numbers determined scientifically as sufficient to fill the requirements to the state. God, according to Bertrand Russell on pages 49-51 of his book, The Impact of Science on Society, less than 5% of males and 30% of females, will be selected from the goyim to be used for breeding purposes and reproduction will be achieved by artificial insemination practiced on an international scale. Investigation has proved that experiments are now being conducted in both Canada and the United States to determine if the semen of human males cannot be preserved and kept fertile indefinitely, the same as the semen taken from prized bulls. Recent discoveries have made it possible to keep semen taken from bulls indefinitely be freezing quickly to a temperature of approximately 130 degrees below zero. Already huge banks have been established in which several million samples of graded semen are stored. Orders received for a particular type or strain can be flown to any part of the world. Smaller banks are now being established in suitable locations to serve the needs of cattle raising states. This statement is fact, not fiction. There are 22 passages in the scriptures which deal with their nature. That is the reason why Shaup named his organization the Illuminati, also briefed on the plan to eliminate the birch of crippled and diseased human beings by resorting to methods of procreation similar to those practiced by the best informed cattle breeders 8. Under God's plan, reproduction of the human species was, and is, intended to be the most holy and sacred function performed by a male and female, joined together in one flesh for the duration of their mortal lives. According to God's plan the primary motive to indulge in sexual intercourse is to procreate another human body into which God can infuse a soul which he wishes to give the opportunity of learning to know him and love him, and to will to serve him voluntarily for all eternity. Theologians admit that in giving the ability of reproduction in accordance to his will, God gave us powers not even enjoyed by the angels. They are all both good and bad, created beings. The powers God gave to human beings caused those angels who had joined Lucifer to become jealous. That is why Lucifer and or Satan decided to foul up God's plan as far as procreation of the human species is concerned. This is the reason women have had to present themselves for purification after the birth of a baby since as far back as we have been able to inquire. This is why baptism was instituted as a sacrament. This explains why women are required to cover their heads in church. Because Satan fouled up God's plan, human beings who descended from Adam and Eve are children of the flesh until they are born again spiritually nine. God's plan says that all human beings should love and be charitable towards their neighbors. The word neighbor, as used by Christ, means a person who won't do another harm, but rather will go out of his way to do a good turn. Even though the recipient be a stranger, the Luciferian doctrine says that in order to impose absolute power by satanic despotism, those who are selected to rule must first prove they are utterly devoid of human sentiment. According to the pronouncement of Albert Pike, this ridding themselves of human emotions must be carried out by men selected to rule to the extent that they don't even feel love, or sympathy, or any sentimental feeling whatsoever. 
towards members of the opposite sex. Pike ruled that women initiated into lodges of adoption should be made common property. He said members of the Palladian Rite should use them frequently and without passion, but solely to gratify their sexual urges without allowing love or sentiment, which led so many human hearts astray, entering into their sexual relationships. Thus, he says, men shall unchain women while obtaining absolute control of their own human weaknesses. So we see that everything that God considers good, Lucifer says is evil. Everything God considers strength of character, Luciferians consider weakness of character. 10. God's plan requires that human beings care for the sick, the disabled, the imprisoned, and the aged. The Luciferian ideology insists that all goem who become unable, or unfit, to serve the state efficiently shall be destroyed. This diabolical principle is being made acceptable in the minds of innocent human beings by being presented as mercy killing the scientific name for which is euthanasia 11. God's plan for civilized society is based on the principle that two human beings of opposite sex shall establish a home and raise family. Luciferians say that the destruction of the family and home is absolutely essential to the success of their conspiracy 12. God's plan required the parents to provide for their offspring, and to educate them in God's holy will and the facts of life. Luciferians say the state shall regulate births and raise the children born as the result of planned selective breeding. They insist that only the state has the right to educate. Forgive the use of the word by such devils in human form. Those they intend shall serve the state 13. God's plan intends to elevate the dignity of man until he achieves a high degree of spiritual perfection. The scriptures tell us that we can qualify for the highest vacant seats in heaven. Luciferianism is insistent that every human being be reduced to its lowest possible level. It was to further this diabolical theory that Cromwell's level as drove in the thin edge of the wedge. Today it has advanced to the stage where women have demanded the right to adopt the same immoral codes as men. The right to smoke. To do everything that does not elevate them above the filth. The dirt. And slime of decadent human nature. God sets up chastity as a virtue. Lucifer says we must be promiscuous to demonstrate our godship. Christ proved by his devotion and love and respect for his earthly mother Mary, that God intended motherhood to be the greatest of all vocations. Christ's relationship to his earthly mother, and Mary's love and devotion to her son, should tell us that, despite the fall of Eve, he still wants woman to be a being of beauty, charm and grace full of love, charity, and affection. He wants women to be real mothers, not just human incubators who accidentally conceived due to human error. Luciferianism is determined to drag womanhood down into the gutter, and to the level of the natural state of the lower beasts of creation 14. God provided everything we require for our use and benefit. He ordered that we use all things in moderation. The Luciferian ideology says, but doesn't intend, that man shall be a law unto himself and do as he pleases. 15. God's plan of creation placed everything he created in perfect balance. Those who are developing the Luciferian conspiracy to its ultimate objective are doing their level best to put God's creation out of balance and the human race pays the penalty for the sins of presumption committed by Luciferians. We could go on and on, proving that Luciferianism is diametrically opposed to God's plan for the rule of creation. The point we hope we have made is this. The Luciferian ideology has been drawn up to appeal to men who consider themselves intellectual giants. Lucifer knows that his totalitarian ideology is wrong. When he occupied the highest throne in heaven, and was subordinate to God alone, his pride convinced him that if he set up his own kingdom and ruled it with absolute despotism, every aspect and phase of his dominion would have to work peacefully. 
efficiently, and economically. He used his supernatural powers to force the hand of Almighty God. Because God derives pleasure only from those of his creatures who love to serve him voluntarily. Because of their respect for his infinite perfections. He had to let Lucifer go to his eternal damnation or change the principle on which he had established his rule. That Lucifer has realized his enormous mistake cannot be doubted. But his pride wouldn't allow him to admit it. How many, many human beings act like Lucifer in that respect today? The Hitlers, the Mussolinis, the Roosevelts, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the Churchills, all of those who spread Luciferianism from their seats at the top levels of our civilization. How many of our lower orders ape them and follow them? They led us, as Lucifer led so many of the heavenly host, to our destruction. Now that I have studied this subject for so long and from so many angles, I don't find it difficult to understand how Lucifer's supernatural capacity to love God, his creator, turned into an equal capacity to hate God, all of God's creatures, and all his wonderful creation. I don't find it hard to understand that after Lucifer put his totalitarian ideology into practice in his kingdom of darkness, which we term hell, and found out that what he considered perfect in theory, didn't work out as he expected in actual practice. His disappointment caused his hatred to mount until it has reached astronomical dimensions beyond the understanding of the human mind. I no longer find it difficult to accept the definition of hell as given to us in revelations. In fact, I find it easy to understand that after the final judgment, every one of the fallen angels and every human soul who has been deceived by Lucifer and his other princes of darkness, into defecting from God, must of necessity hate not only Lucifer, along with his ruling princes, but also themselves and their neighbors. If it is true that selfish, foolish pride has led the vast majority of those in hell to their own damnation, it is not difficult to understand why the conditions in hell are conditions of utter hate, chaos and confusion. If it is true that the inhabitants of hell are there because they accepted and practiced the inversion of the commandments of God then it should not be difficult for the person of average intelligence to understand that all abominations. Those who directed the Luciferian conspiracy introduced to this earth of ours are being practiced in hell and will continue for all eternity. There can be no doubt that this world of ours has been turned by demonic forces into a little hell due to the fact that we refuse with a blind obstinacy to accept God's law and put his plan into effect on this earth. Conditions have been bad enough. And there can be no doubt that if we remain blind to the truth, and obstinate in our refusal to prove our desire to love and serve God voluntarily for all eternity, then conditions must of necessity deteriorate until, as the Bible states, they will reach the point that if it were not for the intervention of God, no flesh would survive. Matt 24 22, Mark 13 20. That conditions here, and in hell, are what they are is not the will or intention of God. They exist because of Lucifer's selfish, foolish pride, and his determination to be self-sufficient. He defected from God. He took multitudes of others with him. It is only logical to suppose that after he realized his mistake, his hate reached the proportions that he was determined to continue to be revenged on God by deceiving his creatures. God wished to fill the vacancies left by Lucifer and his angels. Lucifer cares not what befalls those he deceives, or even what is in store for himself. This utter lack of further interest in anything is real despair. Artists, preachers, authors, and others have depicted hell and its inhabitants in such an exaggerated way that, instead of making people believe in it, they have caused untold millions, particularly in the last two centuries, to discredit its very existence. 
these so-called intellectuals have served the Luciferian cause well indeed, because when one rejects God, he automatically rejects the idea of heaven and hell. Chapter 5 The Luciferian Doctrine From the book Satan, Prince of this World written by 